I'm Karine. I'm from the University of KwaZulu Natal. I'm doing my Bachelor of Science Honours degree in Marine Biology, and I will be presenting my findings to you this afternoon. Um, so my project was supervised by Dr. Ursula Charlotte, who could not be here today, and co-supervised by Dr. Matt Dickin, who's sitting there. Um, yeah. So basically, just a background to my project. Um, I looked at the catches of shark and target species in the Blythe Downs and Quasi um, shark nets. Um, the reason for this is because there is a proposed Tegela Banks MPA, um, which was proposed at the beginning of this year, and these nets are in closest proximity to the Tegela Bank MPA, so we sort of wanted to get a feel for what apex predators and bycatch species use the area for, or are around an area. Um, so just a brief intro, um, shark nets first um, were used in South Africa, uh, specifically at Durban in 1952, um, and today there are 37 beaches along the KwaZulu-Natal coastline which are protected by shark nets. Um, in terms of uh, trends of shark catches, they appear to generally decline, and also there's the problem of bycatch, which is all the species which are not targeted as being harmful shark species by the nets yet are caught and are prevalent in the catches. And so the project is basically um, sort of aims to add information to the area around the Tegela Bank, which like I said is, the, is a proposed MPA. Um, at the beginning of the year, Operation Pakisa put into um, place a, a document basically stating that they want to have 22 new marine protected areas along the South African coastline. And um, so I looked at the two shark nets um, in order to sort of see what role the Tegela Bank can play in protecting and conserving these apex, apex predators in the area. So just quickly, this is a study site. So we see here the Tegela River um, and then Zinkwazi and Blythdale Beach where the shark nets are. They are 21 kilometers and 31 kilometers away from the Tegela River mouth respectively. Um, so going back to the aim was then to determine the catch and population dynamics for both target and bycatch species at Zinkwazi and Blythdale and hopefully to have the outcome of adding information about the apex predators which move in and around the area of the proposed MPA. Um, I must state the nets don't fall in the MPA themselves, however sharks and the bycatch species tend to migrate and will end up in the MPA area. So I did this by analyzing the catches of just the top four and top four target and bycatch species in the nets um, and generated first the effort trends looking at the annual catch and catch per unit effort um, in order to sort of standardize the catches since the, the nets themselves aren't equal in length, um, catch per unit effort was used um, which is the number caught in one kilometer of net per year. And then also generating sex trends, looking at the difference between male and female catches at both the beach, this is the total catches, and also just um, to get a feel for what sizes these sharks were and um, bycatch species were, um, we generated size frequency histograms. So the top four species were chosen by ranking the um, catches um, from highest to lowest for firstly the shark species and then the bycatch species. Um, so you'll see in my next slide um, the four species that were chosen, but basically um, looking at their ranking from highest to lowest, and they have to be common to both nets in order to have comparisons. And then again, looking at annual effort trends, seasonal sex trends, and then length frequency um, by means of the pre lens. So these are the four species of shark chosen. It's a black tip at the top, um, top left, the scalloped hammerhead, um, Ragged-toothed shark and the dusky shark, I'm sure you recognize most of them. And then again, um, the bycatch species that had the four highest catches were the giant guitarfish, um, then the bull ray, manta, uh, manta ray species, uh, which could not always be identified down to its proper species level, and then the loggerhead turtle. So for firstly looking at the overall trends, um, at both beaches the catch per unit effort declined, however it was only significant at the Zinkwazi um, shark nets and also for bycatch, um, whilst both catch per unit effort increased over the um, 37 year period, the increase was only significant at Blythdale. So um, I had a lot of results, so I've only put up the significant ones. Um, 
So first we're looking at raggedy sharks and Senkwazi. Um, there was a decline in catch per unit effort, which was significant from 1978 to 2014, and um, at Blythdale for scallop heads, which was again a decline. So while there were um, declines in the other shark species, these two were the only, the only ones that came up as significant. And then again for bycatch, um, there were only significant trends at Zinkwazi, with giant catarfish showing um, a significant decline, and manta ray species a significant increase. Okay, so moving on to sex trends, um, dusky shark, um, sorry, dusky shark catches were higher than males um, for both sites. Female catches, sorry, dusky shark female catches were higher than males for both sites. Um, however, they are caught um, throughout the year, and um, also there was a significant um, difference in the ratio of black um, dusky sharks, females to males at both Zinkwazi and at Blythdale. And again for scalloped hammerheads with um, significant difference from a one-to-one -one ratio of male to female catches. Um, it's interesting to note um, at Zinkwazi, um, very few male, um, male sharks were caught um, during the winter months and at Blythdale, no male sharks were caught essentially um, during the winter months in the middle of the year. And moving on to ragged tooth sharks. Again, the catches are ragged tooth um, shark, female and male. Um, the ratio was only significant at Blythdale. Um, however, you can see at both the beaches, the catches tend to be, sorry. Um, catches tend to be towards the latter half of the year, moving into the summer months. Um, and for the bycatch, the only significant um, difference between male and female catches was for bore ray species. Um, again, you can see at St. Quasi, bore ray appears to be caught throughout the year, um, both male and female. And then again, there's a drop off in um, male catches in the winter months. And then the size trends. Um, so scalloped hammerheads appear to be mainly juvenile at both beaches. Um, the um, uh, male catches tend to be higher again, um, as seen from the previous slide. And um, however, sharks, um, the laser sign, um, the sharks with um, neonates, um, sorry, <laughs> losing my words, um, the smaller sharks, just the newborn sharks, um, there tend to be very few of them in the less than 600 and between 601 to 800 category, and the rest still being all juvenile up until about two, 2,200 um, centimeters. Um, and again, the uh, same trend for um, Blythdale, where it was predominantly juvenile and no female um, sharks larger than um, 1,400 centimeters were caught. And at Ragged Tooth, there was no sig um, sorry, um, Ragged Tooth um, tend to be more sub adults um, caught at both um, both um, net installations. Um, sub adults just encroaching onto the adults category. Um, and I'll go into the potential reason for this a little bit later. Um, so, um, just my conclusions. Uh, you can see from the overall catch trends, um, both shark and bycatch catch trends were seem to be consistent um, with other shark netting programs, um, such as the ones in Australia and New South Wales. Um, and according to the literature which we have on shark catchers, um, the rate of exploitation of all the shark species appears to be sustainable. Um, then we have the differences between male and female catches that were significant correlated with um, the species that have known life history uh, strategies which, um, which vary in, in those species for male and females. Um, like I said, uh, the majority of sharks caught were juvenile and sub-adults. Um, with the raggedies, um, they tend to migrate northwards um, during the winter winter months with the waters warmer coming up the north coast um, of KZN. Um, and this is primarily made up of female, um, pregnant female sharks um, during the gestation period. So then going back to the Tegela Bank, um, the MPA has the potential to provide protection for apex predators during these vulnerable life stages such as the ragged and also the scalloped hammerhead which use the Tegela um, river mouth in the Tegela Bank area as a nursery ground. 
and therefore the Tegela Bank would be beneficial, or the MPA, um, should it be implemented, would be very beneficial for shark and the bycatch species which move in and around the area. Thank you.